I think at first, um, as always, actually, who are you and why? Yeah, that's good. Oh, okay. No, uh, I'm Venom Rada, affectionately known as V. Uh, like the it's movie. Easier to say. Yeah, also V for Vendetta. Um, oh, that, that's a good name <laughs> for it. Yeah. <laughs> Power play. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm a product manager on the Chrome Web Platform team. Work on Lighthouse, Speed Metrics, trying to you know make the web fast. All right, that's good. Nice. And I'm Eric Beidelman. I actually work with you guys. <laughs> look, <laughs> everyone we've interviewed, we work with. You don't need to say that. <laughs> Try to be but, perfectly clear. Hey, look, there's a certain amount of, of you know, theater here. Yeah. Like, like we're sort of pretending we don't know all of the content already. Also, I mean, have you ever done video before, mate? <laughs> no. This is how it works. So, so you have this really lame thing that you develop and that you PM, what is it? Yeah, what's Lighthouse? What does it do? Yeah, I'm talking what, about it. Yeah. Go. Sure. I, I can... <laughs> it's your product, V. <laughs> sure. So uh, Lighthouse is a developer tool. Anyone can run it. And it basically gives you a personalized report over your website across five different categories. Uh, progressive web app, performance, accessibility, developer press practices, and SEO. You got that memorized. I got, that's that's I, pretty bad. I'm a, I'm pretty I'm bad a, I'm a PM. I, I pitch this every day. I could have so been like, able to say, Progressive and and accessibility, and then I was like, well, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who, who would run this and when? What's the? Yeah, so we really think it's for any developer that's building a website, and we think it's really helpful because you know there's so much advice that Google and like you know other blogs kind of give out in terms of like what are you supposed to do to build a good website, and our mission is really to try to like consolidate all that together in one place, mm -hmm. so you can just run one tool, it tells you exactly what you need to do, and then you're just like done. And we have it in DevTools now, right? Yes, we do. It's, uh, you can run it on the audits panel. The audits panel. Mm, that was one could say it's a guiding light for web developers. Oh, wow. Follow, right? yes. Look how the metaphor <laughs> right. works out. Let <laughs> me drop those all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so give me an example of one of the things that Lighthouse is going gonna, is gonna to tell me I'm doing right or wrong. What's the... Sure. So, for example, in the performance section, it can tell you if you've optimized your images properly, if you need to... Which pop. lots of people don't. Mm. Yes. Mm. It's a very easy win that you can get, yeah. that you can do in order to you know, improve the side of your performance. With PWA, it can tell you like if you have a service worker installed, errors in your manifest files. What I want, to, what I actually want is, uh, can we? You know, you know how like, when anyone mentions Intel, it has to cut to the like the little logo and dum, 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 dum. Dum. <laughs> What do we have to do to get one for service worker? So when your face shows up, goes. <laughs> <laughs> it just zooms towards the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we make that happen. Can we do I that in post. Sure. We'll do that in post. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, things Lighthouse can tell you, performance, images, amongst many other things, PWA, service so workers. we are out of jobs, basically, so you're telling us. Yeah, that's true. Yes, two. yes, that, that was a goal all along, that, actually. That hurt? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's like our key success metric is like, do Surma and Jake have a job? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, success rate. Dot com. Do Surma and Jake still have a job? Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> so why, so what, what would we do instead? What, what is our, what's our backup? Well, I have a D, mate. Oh, oh yeah, and now the service worker thing's done. What's next after like service that. worker? Everybody's shipping now? We, like... we do background fetch. I've got, I've got, right, I've got yeah, stuff on the background. Right. I might be okay. <laughs> okay, so, but, you know, but, but solving people's performance problems. Is, is it doing, like, is it load time performance? Is it runtime performance or both? I think our goal is both. Uh, ultimately, like, you know, we want to be the most comprehensive tool possible. And we actually added a whole bunch of new loading focused audits this year. Um, there's a talk that Addy and Eva gave um, at I.O. this year, so if you're interested in... Talking to her later. Yes. So she'll tell us more yes, about that. Yes, so you can learn more from her. Yeah, don't steal her content. Yeah. I already know that. So. Sorry. <laughs> so so is, is Lighthouse something that developers are going to have to like run manually as to, you know, whenever they want, or is there something is yeah. there ways they can put it in their, in their tool chain? Yes, yes. So you can run it manually through DevTools, as we talked about. There's also a standalone Chrome extension and an NPM module those of us who like running things on the command line. Um, but actually, at I.O. this year, we're announcing an API um, in which you know, people can use to like kind of automate. Lighthouse as a service. Lighthouse as a service. Lass. Lassie. Damn. Like Lassie, like the, like the White House dog. Yeah, like, oh, oh, I love like mango Lassie. That, oh, that's, that too, that's delicious. That, that too, yes. If you want to you drink it or straw adore in the lighthouse. it. Lassie as a service. <laughs> Lassie as a service. <laughs> drink up. But yeah, so you can you can use the API and integrate it into your CI workflow. Um, there's actually one of the partners we work with on the API, Duda, actually named after the dude in Big Lebowski. 
funny so many enough. This is yeah. On fire. Um, yeah. So Duda actually integrated it to their Jenkins uh, continuous integration pipeline. We're going to show off that demo at I/O as well. So at this state of the union, they said they're looking into how they can instead of just you know you use AMP, therefore you get batched. They're like you do good in performance, therefore you get a good rating on search. Does it mean that if I get a good score in Lighthouse, I can be pretty confident that I will do well in whatever they come up with as well? Yeah, so the details of like the exact criteria, we're still working on figuring yeah. out exactly. But what we're trying to do and make sure with the criteria is whatever metrics that we tell developers to optimize for, mm -hmm. that there's a way to measure it in the lab and there's a way to measure it in the wild. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, and then in the lab, obviously, we're going to make sure that tools like Lighthouse are exposing those metrics as well. So yes, short, long answer to your no, question. I mean, that's good because that just means, with you said you have an NPN module, we have it in DevTools. It means I can run it locally and then I can put it on my CI as well. Yes. And I can like you want to test reject the PR version. if somebody does stupid things. And you can use the Lighthouse API if you want to run at scale and you don't have to install anything and just get don't have to JSON results. Keep your own machines yeah. or anything do this for like a living. that. You basically could. So how, how quickly are the rules in, in Lighthouse developed? Like if I you know, work really hard, get my like score of 100 on Lighthouse, am I going to check back next week and, and it's going to be 50? Uh, so we try to make sure you know things like this don't happen, but we also want to make sure that you know, it's comprehensive yeah. and kind of we keep up to date with the current state of the union. Um, so I, I, mean, we, I don't have like a exact like we add one new audit every month, but uh, we try to make sure that we we kind of tackle different parts of like the performance experience. So we've spent a ton of time on performance and. We launched search engine optimization audits this year, and our kind of next focus is going to be on user experience audits, especially okay. getting like the forms, like how do you make like a really good you know form experience, which is really important to a lot of folks who have like you know e-commerce stores and they want to convert a lot of users, make a lot of money. Sense, yeah. Yeah. I've actually ran, so we have the Perf sandbox over at the the sandbox area, and you, people can like come up and try Lighthouse, right? They can enter their URL and on run the, the tool. Actual on the real lighthouse we have here, it's incredible. But the, the, this, this video is going out after I/O, so you, you, you're not <laughs> you're pitching that is useless. Right. People, people anyway, are, this been, is not live. I've been very pleased to see all of the score. The accessibility scores are actually pretty high, and SEO scores are really high too. So people yes. care about accessibility and SEO. That's like good 90 to hear. Score, 90 plus, so oh. we're doing really well. Oh, just testing the same site over and over. That's true. Example.com. <laughs> <laughs> doing well. <laughs> So what have you been doing then? Yeah, so I, I've been working on Puppeteer and, and working with Headless Chrome. I got really excited about just controlling Chrome. Uh, what, right, yeah, that's, that's two things. Okay, let's parse that out. Yes. All right, Headless Chrome. So Headless Chrome, I think we shipped it maybe Chrome 59 last year. Basically run Chrome without a window, right? Headless mode. Head, so, yeah. head fill mode, headless so mode. So like what Phantom yeah. used to be, Phantom Jazz. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Cool thing about this is it's it's Blink, it's Chrome, right? It stays up to date with the web, so you no longer have to. I got to, the new APIs. Yeah, exactly. You oh, can, so you is can it, test is it, service worker. Does you it can stay test. up to date with each version of Chrome? Yeah, it's like exactly. E oh, excellent. So it's just Chrome, but you throw on a command line flag, dash dash headless, and you don't see Chrome, but you can still do everything it does. So it's kind of cool because we can yeah finally test service worker. We can write an app that uses modules, and we can test that. So how do I control it? Like because there's Chrome headless, there's no window. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is where Puppeteer comes in. Oh. Wow. So Puppeteer is a library that we created. It's a node library. You can get it off NPN. Um, it bundles Chrome, so you don't have to worry about getting that or anything. And you can basically just use these high-level APIs, control Chrome, do everything the dev tools can do. But, oh, so you're using the DevTools protocol under the hood? Yeah, yeah. So nice. the protocol is crazy big, as you guys probably know. And yeah. it's very complex. There's a lot of stuff you can do. It's not immediately obvious how to put things together sometimes. So can, can you do multi-touch through protocol? You can, uh, you can do touch. I think we are per personally working on multi-touch. OK. Uh, we have keyboard input. We have touch, bare bones stuff right now. But as you know, as the, the days go on, the engineers will add more stuff for sure. All right, all right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah anything DevTools can do, you can do in Puppeteer. That's really important as well. It's, it's great to see like, having that API to like, send out input events exactly the way yeah. that it would, I, it would occur if the user Because in JavaScript, buttons. you can't. If you like dispatch event yourself, it's different. It's <laughs> different. It's, it's slightly different. Yeah, exactly. in oh, the it way can, it can screw you over really bad. Right, exactly. So that's why it's yeah, it's so important to be doing this stuff like, like, yeah. for real. Well, it's cool too because like DevTools has features like emulation and um, code coverage and all these like really powerful things are adding. Now we can tap into that and you can write scripts that you know analyze your site in a different way or something that DevTools might not be able to do. I haven't even thought but, of that. Is coverage yeah. already exposed in Puppeteer? Coverage is exposed in Puppeteer. Tracing is exposed. I mean, that's also um, good for CI. We're like, yeah. yo. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You have unused CSS yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, sh I'm showing some cool demos because I, I was like, man, DevTools is cool, but we can be even cooler than the DevTools. Oh, we're totally going to link right. to both of your talks in the yeah. description. Nice. 
So what is the biggest upcoming thing, Puppeteer, that you look forward to? Biggest upcoming thing. So we just, um, we're, we're working on more touch stuff, just making sure the input APIs are really yeah. good. We're working on being able to test your like your end-to-end -end kind of PWA story. So, you know, does my app fully work offline? Am I like missing something from the cache? Yeah. Um, be able to do things like turn on and off notifications, um, kind of go through the the end to end story. So many things I never thought about that they would yeah. be testing. I know. Yeah, so, well, so you can test your UI, you can test whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, and notifications part of that as well, so you can actually access headless notifications too. Like. Uh, eventually, yeah. Oh, so, eventually, yeah. Okay. So they okay. need some of these. They need to add at different layers, and this would be at yeah. the DevTools protocol layer. Um, screen screen casting is another big feature request. People want to be able to take videos of like what's going on on the screen, and and so some it's of that, headless, but it still gets rendered yeah, to video. Yeah, it's you know. It's yeah. just like Command H, hide the window. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Is, that, is that how you implemented it? It's a trick. It. It's a trick. No, it's oh, right. excellent. It's outsourced. Some person somewhere goes like. <laughs> I, I think on Mac, actually, you sometimes you actually see the Chrome logo come up as it starts to boot up Chrome, but it's just and like they're hiding. It. Yeah, they're hiding it. They're oh, hiding it. so what we're, what we're hearing is massive hack. <laughs> massive hack. Right. Uh, all that engineering work. It's all Chrome with its you know beautiful well, tricks. From, from my experience, I can say the, the upside is use, I used to set up like testing on Travis or whatever, and then you have this whole dance of installing the X frame buffer server and starting Chrome with that frame buffer device, and that's not necessary anymore. You legit can't just start it without an actual UI. We so were actually doing that lighthouse for a while, doing our unit tests on Travis, and you have to install all that stuff. And instead, we, you know, as soon as headless Chrome comes around, you can add that flag, and everything gets a lot easier. Um, you, uh, what, what, so, right, which order are we doing? <laughs> which order? Which order? Which order? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, did you want to do this in English? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Preferred if we could. Because we were going to explain it in our own words. <laughs> and, uh, and, we'll and catch on. We're fast learning. Yeah. Okay.